So let's have a look at what is new at this museum. It's not obsolete for this weekend's open day. The tickets and information and all that stuff is below if you're interested. Well, uh, the uh, Transcendent 2000 is off the wall right now. I'm gonna get it fixed because yeah, I'm not sure when it broke, but it stopped working at some point in the last month or so. Uh, I didn't, so I'm gonna have to have a look and see what it is. I'm thinking it's probably quite a simple thing and straightforward, but never say never, touch. Touch wood. There's a Brawl and Cure beat frequency oscillator that is going through a bunch of pedals in the interactive section, as well as there's space that has been made for the CR78, which is now bolted in place and stuff, so people can play on that as well. And the Game Boy Mega Machine is finally making sound for the museum open days. Granted, it is not the most friendly, user-friendly machine to uh, make interactive at a museum because it is an absolute nightmare to control and use. It's quite a behemoth and uh, yeah, it's, it's such a fine tuning of everything and um, yeah, keeping on track of it for the whole day is pretty tough. But it's sort of working and people were figuring it out a little bit but making it musical requires a little bit of uh, background knowledge about how it was made and stuff. But hopefully I'm gonna make a nice list and I'll also plan in uh, when it's finished in the next few months uh, to offer residencies a couple of days long so you can play with it and record some stuff and at the end of that maybe either do a live stream or a little bit of an interview about your experience with it and what sort of noises you made out uh, for the museum's channel. But right now, uh, yeah, it's basically set up with some grills on the front of the Leslie speakers. There's a pull out keyboard uh, and yeah, hopefully as time goes on it's gonna get filled in and over the next couple of months, fingers crossed, should be done. But now let's get to the meat of this video, which is another electromechanical marvel. Granted, this setup I actually finished in the morning last Sunday, so people got to see it anyway, uh, where if they came along last weekend. But I'm gonna, I haven't showed it on YouTube yet, so here, uh, let's have a look. And if you listen carefully, you can actually hear what we're about to talk about today. So let's begin in this little cubby hole over here. This is what we're talking about today, and uh, I'm just gonna turn up the brightness a bit, get the ISO pumping. Uh, yeah, uh, so this is a master clock. So if you aren't aware of these things, well it's actually a really, really interesting mechanism in there. And if you are aware of these things, well uh, sit along for the ride, I'm likely to make some sort of mistakes and stuff so um, you can correct me and whatnot because it's always good to learn. So anyway, this ominous box with a massive pendulum inside it uh, is a Type 36 built by Gents of Leicester, a company that builds uh, a numerous different types of master clocks and this specific type uh, would have been found in a, a telephone exchange, hence why it's sat next to all the telephone exchange stuff. And as you can see from the inside, it's basically dominated by this humongous swinging pendulum and it's pretty incredible. So uh, let's start at the bottom, shall we? As you can see, there is a little bit of underlighting that I've put there. I need to do a better job of that. I don't want to have to fix it in place, um, but it just does mean that when it's shut, you get a bit bit of a better view of what's going on in there. So as you can see, there is a little fine tune on the bottom. This means that you can fine tune it to a uh, tick uh, exactly a uh, second. I haven't bothered doing that. And this basically changes where the weight is on the pendulum and you, you know, you can adjust it to make it pretty much exact. And this pendulum is pretty damn hefty. Behind the pendulum, you can see there is the schematic of what's going on here because this is not a spring driven mechanism. No, this is an electromechanical mechanism. So we'll have a look at how it does its thing in a second. And then above that is the Gents of Leicester um, logo, as well as the model of this master clock. So above this, it's got the advance and retard switch. This is for basically adjusting the times on all of the clocks that are connected to this master clock around around a building, or in this case, around a telephone exchange. So this next bit is the amazing mechanism that makes it do its pendulum thing, and it is so cool. So when Richard dropped off the demonstration setup, he spoke about a master clock because he had one and he decided to keep it. And uh, he spoke about this mechanism right here, and it made me really into the idea of trying to track one down. And yeah, it took a couple of months to find one that was at a affordable price for me. So this is the one that I found right here, but let's have a look at this mechanism. So when the pendulum loses a bit of momentum, what happens is this switch 
actually gets switched. Let's wait and see what happens. You'll see what I mean because seeing it is, there it was. Did you see that there? So what happened is it lost a bit of momentum, which ended up pushing this switch right here. And that's, and what that switch is, it momentarily turns on these coils right here. It turns on this electromagnet that basically uh, attracts this piece of metal on the pendulum. And that is what recharges the pendulum's movement. There's no spring, there's no movement. It's just every 20 seconds or so, this loses momentum, pushes that switch like it did just then. And that makes it send a tiny pulse through these coils, which makes an electromagnet recharging the pendulum. How fascinating is that? You can see these are a little bit cooked, but luckily they're still working. So let's have a look at the top of the pendulum where the switches are. So there's two right here. These are the seconds. You can fine tune them by adjusting the angles on here. To be honest, I haven't done a massive amount of tuning and uh, it's not exact, but it's close enough for a museum, in my opinion. But as you can see, every second one of these gets pushed. How cool is that? Underneath that, there's these two gears and these also have switches on them. But if you look at this one, uh, it has a deeper notch uh, every six seconds. Let's have a look. It's getting to the deep one right now. And as you can see, every six seconds, it pushes this switch right here. You can see there's a deeper notch and oy! And then this one does exactly the same, but for every 30 seconds. So as you can see, the gears have slightly different teeth. And whenever it's coming to this point, it's on its way. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Oh, oh, wait for it. Wait for the 30 second one. Five, four, this one. As you can see, it pushed that switch then. This is where all the connections are made, the pendulum drive. This is the battery that goes through the switches and then the switch outputs over here. And over here are capacitors that stop the sparks being a bit too sparky in all of these switch contacts. It actually took me quite a while to set this up because it took a lot of fine tuning just to make it play perfectly because you, you have to have it exactly level or the recharge circuit doesn't recharge correctly. Either it pushes it too much or it doesn't push it enough. And yeah, it was a little bit of a balancing act with this thing. So the wires come out of the back of the number 36 and it goes over to this set of relays over here. And this is called the clock unit GMT 34. Uh, and that's the cover of the clock unit right there, but you know, it's uh, it's nice to see what's going on on the inside and you know, there's only a little bit of dust every so often, so why the heck not? To be honest, in the setup that I'm planning, this module isn't really that required. What this is doing is it's pretty much amplifying the signal. So you've got a relay that ticks every one second. You've got a relay here and here. These both tick on every three, 30 seconds and this one uh, ticks on the six seconds. So these receive the pulses from the master clock over there. And then the ones on the top are triggered by these and these are the amplifiers. These ones go off to the clocks or whatever you are syncing up. And then there's some capacitors here that are basically just to sort of soften the load on all of the lines that go off over to all the clocks and this, that and the other. It's pretty cool. So right now I haven't got a massive amount of stuff wired up to this. In fact, I've only got one thing and I'll show you it right now. If we go up and we go over and we go down here and then we go along there, we go over to this thing. This is just a little clock and it sends out one hour pulses and a 24 hour pulse at exactly 1 p.m. Not sure how useful it's gonna be, but I'm gonna be adding a trigger out to it so you can trigger synthesizers. But as you can see, it just did it then. Every 30 seconds, uh, this coil is triggered by the uh, set up over here. This is very similar to the Synchronome Bell programmer, but as you can see, it's a little bit smaller. Every hour this spins around, it sends out a pulse. You can see there's a little little stick that's sticking out there and that pushes this switch right here. And then there's a bigger disc around the outside with all the numbers. And there is only merely a notch out at one o'clock and that sends the 24 hour pulse out of this one right here. So the plan with this one specifically is to set an interface to wire into this one and this one and bolt it up somewhere so it sends out a trigger every hour and every 24 hours. I know it's not super useful but it's really cool just to look and see this item functioning up above here. So this is only the beginning of this setup. The actual plan for this is to sync up the whole museum, everything, like even the music. So this would be multiplied to uh, keep in time. There's gonna be some interface boxes sitting around and that means that this will have a pulse going into this interface box and you could either choose to override a tempo that goes around everywhere with this. So you could set everything to 120 BPM uh, if you really want. Or there'll be another line that has an adjustable one. But these boxes are gonna be going around over to the musical setup uh, in the interactive bit. Over here is gonna be the Brawl and Cure setup. So there's gonna be a sync box over there. So that means you'll be 
able to hear the electromechanical stuff, you can even put microphones onto it and that will be syncing up directly to the music that you might be playing or will be coming out of the machines. For a while now I've been wanting to sync things up to pendulums because they just are pretty cool things but I, I wasn't even aware that you could get ones that were literally used as master clocks. It's just really cool and I think it'll be quite a fun project when this literally syncs up everything together. I think that'll be, that'll be pretty awesome. Also if I manage to find another type of master clock where I'm going to put them together so they'll be phasing off of each other so there's two lines of timing that are sort of the same but they're slightly going out of sync because I'll just make them slightly different one slightly faster and one slightly slower I think that'll that'll really top this off because then obviously when you're standing here and you listen to the sounds coming around from clicks and clocks and clacks to relays around the place and musical instruments and stuff that are all wired into this but they're all slightly going out of phase I think that'll be pretty cool but right now I've only got one but I'm just gonna see if I can find another one for a reasonable reasonable price but yeah, so cool. So if you're planning to come to the museum this weekend, well this will all be set up so you can have a look at it and you know, you can see it all. I'm going to finish a couple of more descriptions on here just to touch on a little bit more of the history of these things and where and what and why they were used. But yeah, there's a couple of other projects I'm hoping to get done by this weekend as well. I might be putting a couple of videos up this week, we'll see. So keep an eye out. If you haven't subscribed already, then please subscribe so you can check out more of these weird machines as they get set up and plugged in. And if you want to support the museum's venture, then please go and check it out over on Patreon because the support really helps to make this possible and make some really cool setups and stuff. And likewise, if you want to come along, well, the information is below for tickets, not just for this weekend, but uh, for plenty of weekends coming. Anyway, I've been Sam. This museum is not obsolete. Uh, this is a master clock. This is the uh, 34 controller clock unit thingamajiggy. Uh, there is another clock up there and it's just... Pretty damn awesome. Anyway, uh, yeah, have a, have a lovely time.